Let's talk about fighting games. Back in the 90s, fighting games were huge. From Street Fighter to Mortal Kombat and Virtual Fighter to Tekken, this genre was crushing it. And growing up in that era, I was a part of that. But I noticed that fighting games kind of fell off as arcades died in the late 90s and early 2000s. Games were still releasing, especially in the 3D space, but 2D fighters especially were bleeding. But after Street Fighter 4, everything would change. So let's talk about how Street Fighter 4 revitalized fighting games. While I loved fighting games growing up, I'm honestly not an expert. So after doing plenty of research online, I decided to sit down and talk with an actual expert, Maximilian Dude. And thanks again for doing this, by the way. Yeah, no problem. I saw the, the Twilight Princess video and I thought it was really fascinating. And I was like, yeah, that's pretty much what I remember when that game came out. But before diving into Street Fighter 4, I think we need some historical context. While fighting games had definitely existed, notably 1980's Boxing on Atari 2600 and 1984's Karate Champ, which was Data East's best-selling arcade game of all time, the genre didn't really pop off until Street Fighter II hit the scene. 1991 Street Fighter II absolutely blew every fighting game until then out of the water with it giving players accurate control, interesting characters, unique combos and skills for each of them, and absolutely fantastic music that I will never get sick of. While fighting games were walking, Street Fighter made them run. Suddenly, people were showing up at arcades just to duke it out in Street Fighter 2. A tournament scene formed around the game, as well as future fighters. People wanted to prove they were the best. Street Fighter 2 did so well, it's estimated to have earned over $10 billion, and is considered one of the most financially successful games of all time. There was a cartoon spin-off based on the characters, as well as an anime and god-awful live-action film. More importantly though, it also inspired an entire genre. Fatal Fury, Mortal Kombat, King of Fighters, Primal Rage, Samurai Showdown, Eternal Champions, Killer Instinct, and so many more fighting games were a direct result of the success of Street Fighter 2. 2D fighting games were on fire. But then... <laughs> Virtua Fighter. Sorry, I only own Virtua Fighter 2 and Virtua Fighter Kids, and I actually prefer kids, so uh, that's the prop. While some games had attempted to create 3D fighters prior to Virtua Fighter, it was this 1993 game that would introduce another dimension, literally, into fighting games. At the time, 2D games were still prospering. I mean, this was only two years after Street Fighter 2, but it did start a growing trend. Many new fighting games, especially in arcades, were opting to be the most cutting edge with 3D graphics and a new style of play. We saw games like Tekken, Dead or Alive, a personal favorite of mine, Rival Schools, and Soul Edge start to take off. Even Mortal Kombat had picked up on the 3D trend, releasing Mortal Kombat 4 in 1997, which went full on 3D. Tekken was flying high, and then Soul Calibur, a sequel to Soul Edge, was universally revered. 3D is a huge part of the evolution of the industry in the 90s, and Capcom, you know, holding onto their laurels with a Viceroy fist was like, we're not letting go of this 2D thing. So their CPS3 boards that were powering Street Fighter were like super dedicated animation 2D engines. So Street Fighter at this point is not changing and they have some EX games that don't look great in comparison. So the franchise is still sort of stuck in this 2D revolution. 3D was the thing fighting games were now striving for. But at the same time, Capcom was finally working on a follow-up to Street Fighter 2 that would release in 1997, Street Fighter 3. However, despite Street Fighter 2's incredible success, Street Fighter 3 fucking bombed. Nobody played it. It, it almost got as much playtime in the majority of arcades I went to than Street Fighter the movie The Game. The only reason this was happening is because Capcom had burned a lot of bridges with so many different iterations of Street Fighter 2. Many of these machines would kind of go unplayed because people just were buying so many copies of Street Fighter. So yeah, there was an appropriate decline around the Street Fighter 3 era, or even other Capcom fighting games like the Versus series were starting to do really well. Street Fighter wasn't in a great spot at this point. That is not to say Street Fighter 3 was bad. In fact, it's now super beloved, especially Third Strike. But at the time, there were issues. 
After a long and troubled development cycle, which involved junior members who had never worked on a fighting game working on Street Fighter 3, eventually Shinichiro Obata stepped up to the plate as planner and put a proper overall design in place. I'm not going to go over this too much, but Polygon has an excellent oral history on the subject. Long story short, it didn't have established characters as it was originally planned to be a new IP, and Ryu and Ken were only added later after it was decided the game would be Street Fighter 3. But these designs weren't popular, and even Shinichiro Obata wasn't a fan, stating, The problem was that the characters had very uninspired designs, and I would say they were quite strange in comparison. And, as it turns out, myself, as little Dave, wasn't a fan of this change-up, and neither were many other Street Fighter fans. I'm a big Ryu main, that's always been my character, so I was at least happy he was there, but I was like, man, like, all the characters I love aren't here, so... The term that was kind of passed around back in the day was, this game's got a bunch of weirdos in it. They took characters that were kind of known, and then hyper-combined them. Dalsam and Blanca get turned into, like, Necro. People just didn't know how to take it. They already did it before in Street Fighter Alpha, where they switched around a lot of the roster, but that was a lot more accepted, I feel. According to Akira Yasuo, an artist on Street Fighter 3, the initial version of Street Fighter 3 saw shockingly low sales. I remember seeing the numbers and just being really surprised at how the game just wasn't selling. It felt like we created the worst selling game at Capcom. It felt awful. Shinichiro Obata goes on to point out that they barely broke even and were lucky not to have gone into the red. There is also another issue at play here, laid out by Bill Gardner, then CEO and President of Capcom USA. When I first joined the company, Coinop was so much bigger than consumer. Just a number of times bigger. That was the mainstay of the Capcom business, was Coinop. So as Street Fighter 3 came out, the home console business was starting to really take off. These are a number of fighting games I own. I own them. I don't have to go to an arcade to play them. As the 90s went on and we reached the aughts, video game console hardware was catching up with the power of arcades. Part of the reason players went to play arcade games was for experiences consoles weren't powerful enough to play. But by the late 90s, the PS1, Sega Saturn, and N64 could pretty well handle most games coming to arcades. And by 2000 and the release of the PS2, this was only further cemented. There's also the fact that by then, most gamers or their friends owned some console, so you didn't need to spend money renting time with the game when you could just buy it and play it as much as you wanted. Or at least, you know, rent it from Blockbuster, where you could play it as many times as you wanted during that rental period without wasting quarters. So Capcom's coin op business was dying, and that brings us neatly back to SNK and King of Fighters, whose business model was also based around coin op. They were one of Capcom's largest competitors in the 2D fighting game space, with Fatal Fury, Art of Fighting, Samurai Showdown, and King of Fighters being particularly well known. Yeah, they went bankrupt. It wasn't just Capcom that was that was feeling the financial impact of 2D fighting games not doing super great. It was also their biggest competitor slash cohort in the industry, which was SNK. And yeah, a lot of the money was escaping the industry at this point. So licenses to games like King of Fighters were sold off, and the results of the games, while annual, were generally viewed as not very good. The 3D era uh, King of Fighters games are are very weird. Some of them are missing the mark with some of its fan base and not exactly what they're looking for. In the early 2000s, fighting games were still seeing some life and some big releases. In particular, in 2000, you had Guilty Gear X. 2000 also saw versus games like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which was massive, and Capcom vs. SNK. But what was truly making a splash were those 3D fighters. Virtua Fighter, Dead or Alive, Tekken, and Soul Calibur had some big early aughts releases, and Mortal Kombat was, um, kind of going through a phase where they were trying things. And then, there was this little game released in 1999. Smash Brothers was big. Also, Different. In fact, so different, many people held the sentiment, and still hold the sentiment, that Smash isn't a true fighting game. Either way, it wasn't a traditional 2D fighting game by any means. Now, before I move on, I absolutely need to clarify something. I'm not trying to claim 2D fighting games or the fighting game genre was completely dead. That's not the case here. 
but it wasn't thriving like it was in the 90s. To me, it felt like that self-fulfilling prophecy you see happen to more niche genres, kind of like what happened with survival horror. Because sales are down, companies don't want to invest a lot of money into a new major title. And because the games that do come out don't get the proper budget or resources, those games don't do well. Rinse and repeat. And the thing about fighting games is they thrive on competition. Smash Brothers was a unique case because, unlike other fighting games, four players could play at once, making it more of a party game with a hardcore scene emerging from that. But with traditional fighting games, a lot of them were struggling to find ways to reach a console market and were therefore investing in major single-player campaigns, like Mortal Kombat introducing a single-player campaign conquest mode. On the 2D front, even Arxis, whose Guilty Gear had a cult following, was experimenting with 3D with Guilty Gear 2 Overture. They did still put out occasional 2D fighters, like Guilty Gear XX and Battle Fantasia, which is on a 2D plane, but sales weren't exactly fantastic for either. Meanwhile, SNK was pumping out King of Fighters games, and while they certainly had their fans, to be sure, they were failing to make a major splash in the overall fighting game community and weren't really revitalizing it from the peak of the early 90s. Meanwhile, Capcom, who had been one of the kings of fighting games, had remained relatively quiet, after the release of Street Fighter EX3 in 2000, the sentiment around Capcom was that a new numeric Street Fighter would never be made, as the demand just wasn't there. From everything that we understood, uh, Capcom was effectively done with their fighting games. We can thank Fighting Jam or Capcom Fighting Evolution for that, uh, because it was not good. All of this led to what's considered the FGC, or fighting game community, Dark Age. Yeah, the FGC Dark Age term is funny with perspective now, but was real. And yeah, once again, the FGC is largely fighting game Capcom focused. So for for them, it was a dark age after CVS 2, which was the last big game Capcom fighting get jammed did not hit in the ways that people wanted. Uh, it wouldn't be until like HD Remix would come out. And even that a lot of people are not very happy with just in general. But there was a, a larger like several year time frame in the mid 2000s and later in the 2000s before SF4, where this is considered the dark ages of fighting games. But mind you, like, bruh, Tekken 5 came out in this time frame. The Guilty Gear XX series continues to expand and get a whole bunch of different versions. Soul Calibur has like three different games that come out. It, it's a dark age for, for Capcom fans. It's a dark age for Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Capcom and Darkstalkers. But with perspective, it wasn't exactly a dark age for the entire genre as a whole. But something was happening in the 2000s that would help to revitalize the genre. Online play, and a wave of new consoles. Multiplayer online definitely existed, but it was typically relegated to PC, whereas most fighting games were on consoles. Additionally, with fighting games, lag is a far bigger issue. Fighting games are reliant on players' fast twitch responses, and if there's any lag online, then your input will be delayed or you'll receive a delay in the input from your opponent. It's still an issue with online gaming today, but it is significantly better. At the same time, while the PS2 and original Xbox kinda had online services, with Xbox Live launching in 2002 and the PS2 had a network adapter, most games didn't utilize these and they didn't have widespread player adoption. But the Xbox 360 and PS3 had far better internet support, and the internet in general was getting faster and more usage. And Xbox especially honed in on this with their Xbox Live service, making digital downloads a major marketplace that they'd heavily promote. In 2006, Capcom decided to re-release Street Fighter II Hyper Fighting to Xbox Live's online marketplace. This might seem somewhat unnotable, except for one thing. Capcom had worked on the netcode for Hyper Fighting to give the game online play, and it was popular. It didn't blow people's minds, and it wasn't the first time you could play fighting games online, but it worked. And it worked well, at least for the time. Before SF4, there's there's a couple of errant notes of, of Street Fighter like being around. We get this cheese ball port on the Xbox 360 called Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting. And yeah, it's a it's a port of Street Fighter 2 Turbo slash Hyper Fighting that was from the arcades. And it has online play on the Xbox 360. And that's pretty much the only I remember being so excited about this because it was the only Street Fighter thing we heard of for years. And it was like, oh, my God, Street Fighter isn't completely dead, I guess. Suddenly, online multiplayer seemed like a real possibility for fighting games. Suddenly, after the death of arcades, fighting games might be able to bring back competition. 
In fact, Street Fighter II Hyper Fighting had been so successful for Capcom that it brought back demand for a new Street Fighter. So in 2006, producer Yoshinori Ono pitched Street Fighter IV and R&D head Keiji Inafune approved the project. It was decided to make Street Fighter IV 2.5D. All of the characters and background elements would be 3D, but the fighting itself would take place on a 2D plane, just like traditional Street Fighter. It was art director and character designer Daigo Ikeno who would pitch and use a non-photorealistic rendering style to give the characters a hand-drawn look, with plenty of stylistic flair. For Street Fighter 4, Yoshinori Ono wanted to keep the game closer to Street Fighter 2 compared to other games in the franchise, which helped bring the game back to an accessible level, which meant a lot of changes from the less popular Street Fighter 3. It also meant that people who grew up on Street Fighter 2 but hadn't played fighting games in a long time would feel right at home with this one. However, although it felt like SF2, it still maintained some elements from Street Fighter 2's successors. Additionally, Street Fighter 4 added focus attacks, which allowed players to essentially parry and counterattack. On top of that, there were brand new ultra combos, which were devastating cinematic attacks players could perform if their revenge meter filled up enough by taking damage from their opponent. And while Street Fighter 4 did, of course, release to arcades, Notably, the game included online play right out of the gate for console and PC players, which I'll get right back to. But first, the thing about Street Fighter 4 is it was fantastic. The game was critically acclaimed with a 94 out of 100 for PS3 on Metacritic and 93 out of 100 for Xbox 360. The game sold incredibly well at 3.4 million copies and in general, fans loved it. Street Fighter was back. So, great, Street Fighter's back. But what makes 4 so special? Well, for one thing, the last time there was a brand new numeric entry into the Street Fighter series was 1997 with Street Fighter 3. That means it had been over 10 years since the Street Fighter had gotten that special brand new numeric and wasn't a spin-off. By being so stingy to give a new Street Fighter game that number, and not like Alpha or EX, it automatically helped Capcom create a huge amount of hype for a brand new numeric entry. Meanwhile, the game actually received genuine marketing support from Capcom. Yeah, the marketing push for Street Fighter 4 was big, and the idea behind Street Fighter's marketing was that we're going back to the start, right? We're gonna bring you back to Street Fighter 2 because that is what you know and love. We're gonna bring it back to its roots. So they had a good plan, right? And that plan was effective and it worked. They were catering towards nostalgia and the relative newness of a new Street Fighter and its systems and visuals. We heard a lot about it and they put a lot of money into it and that's probably a big reason why it was so successful. The marketing team focused on making sure that players understood the game felt like Street Fighter 2. Capcom worked to hype the release of Street Fighter 4 and it worked big time. The few arcades that did get Street Fighter 4 had lines around the block for people to compete and play. The hype around this game is ballistic, right? Once again, the, the core centrifuge of what is known as the fighting game community was very Capcom focused and we were just prepared and it, it was dead, right? It was put into the ground, there was a gravestone made, it was relatively buried. So any of us that were getting anything, it was relatively exciting, but not what we wanted to eventually get to the point where, oh no, it's coming back and it's coming back in a big way. I don't think I've ever been more hyped for a game in my entire life. To me, the only other thing that rivals the amount of excitement for Street Fighter 4's eventual launch is like a Modern Warfare 2 situation. And I don't mean current day Modern Warfare 2, I mean like Xbox 360 era, that was crazy. Best example of this is I, I got lucky to be in the epicenter of Street Fighter 4 when the arcade release happened. And several arcades in my area of Southern California got Street Fighter 4 Japanese arcade boards. These things are like 15 to $20,000 a piece in 2008. So places like Super Arcade and Family Fun Arcade and Arcade Infinity become this ridiculous mecca for Street Fighter 4 content. These arcades that were not designed to have this many people in them had that many people crammed around these Street Fighter 4 cabinets that there would be a list where a dude would be like, hey, I want to play the game. What do I got to do? And there'd be like a producer. He's like, OK, so what's your name? And he would pull out a list, man. And it'd be pages long of just names. And this guy would be like the one <laughs> making sure that everyone gets their time on the machine in some way. I don't feel like any other fighting game launch um, after Street Fighter 4 has matched that absolute hype and excitement. It was the proper reckoning of a franchise that 
everyone was not ready to come back. And when it came back in such a way, uh, the world showed up. Street Fighter 4! Street Fighter 4! Street! Street Fighter 4! Street Fighter 4! Street Fighter 4! Street Fighter 4! That was how we all felt. That was a perfect representation of the energy in the community around this time. For the collector's edition, they included a 65 minute animated film, Street Fighter IV The Ties That Bind. Mad Cats made various controllers for the game, and meanwhile, there was, of course, the push across gaming magazines. And then, there's that whole online play thing. Online play and fighting games had just started to be implemented with games like Tekken Dark Resurrection, Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting, and Virtua Fighter 5. Tekken 6 had come out even before Street Fighter 4 did, and I, being relatively excited to get back in Tekken since Tekken 5, was ready to jump online and learn some new characters and, you know, hope that the online is going to perform better than Tekken 5 Dark Resurrection on PS3, which was a trash fire in terms of online play to learn that it wasn't that much different and it felt about the same. And I think I, after two days, I was just done. But Street Fighter IV's net play was actually good. It had functional matchmaking. It didn't go down or have really big problems in between its launch period. And a lot of people still play competitive Street Fighter IV to this day, I mean, online. They won't play people that are far away, but they'll play people in close proximity because for delay-based netcode, um, if you play people that are up close and it is functioning well, it will work and it will it will perform with a not too much input delay to compromise the experience. So lucky enough, Street Fighter 4 is a game that kind of nails all of those those situations and it's got cool championship modes. It's got like tournament modes that you can play online. It is the best and highest effort fighting game online systems that I think had been done. So they knew. They knew that people weren't going to be playing this in person that much anymore, much less the arcade scene is going to be playing the arcade version forever. There was already a, a, an element at Capcom where they were sort of aware that this is where the industry is going and they have to go in sort of full stop. But is it the best netcode ever with comparison now? It's not. It's still it's pretty rough. But at the time when your perspective is very few games that even run online, it was almost the best there was. Thanks to Street Fighter IV's extremely strong sales, it brought the thunder to online play. The game's use of online play skyrocketed the competitive scene as players could finally have that arcade experience again. A little before, in 2007, a little site called Justin TV had started. This was a live streaming site, and its game streaming, which had become the most popular part, would eventually become Twitch TV meaning that suddenly players could start streaming themselves playing fighting games online. There was also the rise of YouTube, which has started in 2005 and was now really starting to pick up. Even as somebody like me that had a very focused amount of tournament experience with Street Fighter 4 was able to go on and at least share those experiences with people and let them know that you can get better at this, that there is a way. And before it felt like the gap between a a casual player and uh, people that were hardcore tournament slash arcade folks that went there religiously was so big. And now that does seem to be shrinking in a lot of ways. The scene is expanding, but the access of information was so much more than any other game. It allowed Street Fighter 4 to thrive and grow tech and make things that were sometimes impossible even easier because the content creation age had started. So like you were saying, perfect place, right scenario, right time. Once again, this only further helped to promote Street Fighter 4, as players were actively streaming themselves competing with other people, and bringing about even more awareness and interest to the genre as a whole. Remember that number of 3 million sales? Well, what that translates to is people suddenly joining the fighting game community. People were competing online and streaming Street Fighter 4. Suddenly, the game had become a catalyst for the fighting game community. Thanks to Street Fighter 4's sales, it also proved that fighting games could sell incredibly well under the right circumstances. Street Fighter 4 was definitely responsible for, I'd say, because of how much money it made and how successful it was, putting like the glimmer in the eye of other developers that know our fighting game can do it. Right, uh, we're not we're not going to be as big as Street Fighter, but the chance of them evolving in some way and taking their franchise to a different level, whether that was like Mortal Kombat or you know Guilty Gear X Hard later on with a very similar 2.5D styling, I, I think is that's unprecedented. Street Fighter Four was the reason that kind of happened, and it is one of the bigger reasons why fighting games from this point forward sort of are given a launch pad to have the opportunity to even do so. And the great thing was, this created new fighting game fans in general. 
if any of these 3 million players enjoyed Street Fighter 4, there's a very real possibility they'd be introduced to other 2D fighters, like Guilty Gear or, hey, that other 2008 Arxis release, Blaze Blue. In the fighting game community, taking a look at EVO, Street Fighter 4 brought a giant new momentum to the annual fighting game tournament that started in 1996. In 2009, when EVO added Street Fighter 4 to the roster, organizers had never seen such a large turnout before. There were 1,040 entrants, with Street Fighter 4's tournament having three times more entrants than any other game. EVO as a whole is thought to have a pre-Street Fighter 4 era and post-Street Fighter 4 era, as that's just how much popularity to help bring to the competitive fighting scene. It marked the start of substantial growth and interest. According to Ed Boon, co-creator of Mortal Kombat, while Street Fighter 4 didn't inspire Mortal Kombat 9, which brought the series back to its 2D roots and also performed incredibly well for the team, Street Fighter 4 proved to them that they were on the right track, bringing Mortal Kombat back to 2D, and it helped energize them. Which I found particularly interesting, as Mortal Kombat 9 released in 2011, three years after Street Fighter 4, so I wanted to get Max's thoughts on it. The question I've kind of been pondering in my head, if Street Fighter 4 hadn't happened, if that hadn't come out, and Mortal Kombat 9 came out exactly as is, do you think it would have had that same sort of effect on the community? For sure. Um, and, and that's a, it's an interesting take because MK9 actually did have a huge impact on the community. It just didn't have an impact on what became the proper known term FGC. If you're in the FGC, you're pretty much into like Street Fighter or Marvel, right? And then there was these segregated sort of separate FGCs of like Tekken players and anime players and Mortal Kombat, NRS scene, they almost get different names. But if we're talking about impact and scale uh, in terms of how things would be changing and moving forward, MK9 took seemingly like a lot of notes from Street Fighter 4, came out also like three years after SF4 did. And I'm sure like some of the things they did in SF4 manipulated and changed what they were eventually doing in MK9 in some way, even if they were planning on going back to 2D. But it clearly is like inspired in a lot of ways because it does the same roster choices, it does the same sort of visual choices. And MK9 is largely the reason NRS is in the spot they're at right now where they're the absolute top dog king because Street Fighter has faltered several times from, you know, SF4 and beyond and Capcom fighting games in general have as well. But NetherRealm has consistently improved and engaged and enhanced every single title from Mortal Kombat 9 and beyond. And regardless of what you feel about gameplay, those games are substantial updates from the previous one and are big new experiences that are worth buying and put your money into. At some point, I do think 2D fighting games were going to make a comeback, but there's absolutely no denying the insane impact Street Fighter 4 had in revitalizing both 2D fighting games and the entire fighting game community as a whole. It was definitely the right game at the right time. Thanks to it being a fantastic fighting game, being a numerical entry into one of the most popular fighting game franchises of all time, receiving marketing support, and having online play, it brought all new players into fighting games and helped bring about a whole new wave of 2D fighters. Street Fighter 4 um, is an astronomical game, not just for Street Fighter, but for fighting games as a whole, because a lot of different approaches and tact from other companies change after SF4. And that is how Street Fighter 4 saved 2D fighting games. I hope you guys enjoyed. We have a whole playlist of games that save their respective system, franchise, or genre, so please consider checking those out. A huge, huge thank you to Maximilian Dude for coming on this episode. Talking to him was an absolute blast. He makes amazing content, so if you somehow haven't seen it, please check it out. One more thing. The Street Fighter 2 intro music is still my favorite song in the entire franchise, so please make more remixes of it, please. I am begging you. Thank you.